Hallelujah. Since the beginning of February, we have been talking about what? Joy, joy, joy in its various forms. Brother Latunde came, he told us that faith was the substrate of joy. Then Brother Jonathan came and told us that there's a sound of joy. Then my bestow, Mama Christolos, last week, ha, she danced the victory dance here. And we all went home dancing and with joy in our hearts. All right. So what am I going to talk about? I'm going to kind of build on what Brother Latunde talked about. Faith being the substrate of joy. I'm going to take it from another dimension. That if you don't have faith, what happens? And I am saying that doubt can be a hindrance to joy. I like to, to talk to be people based on my own experience. I don't have problem doubting God. I know God. I know God, he is, he is, I know what he can do, what he can do, as he gives me daily knowledge. I don't doubt Jesus Christ that he's my king, he's the lover of my soul. The problem I have is with myself. Has anybody heard of imposter syndrome? Yes, okay. So we are going to talk about imposter syndrome and how it can be a hindrance to our joy. Let us pray. Lord, I thank you for this opportunity to bring the word to your great people here. I yield myself to you, O oh Lord, to be used. Make my tongue like the pen of a ready writer, O oh Lord. And put grace upon my lips, that whatsoever words come out of my mouth, O oh Lord, will bring grace to the people, minister comfort to those who need to hear it, and to build up people in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Okay, so what is imposter syndrome? It's when you are qualified for something. You are qualified to do something, but you just internalize that, oh, I'm not worthy of sitting here. I'm not worthy of doing this thing. I don't have the required skills. I'm just a fraud. There are many people uh, in the corporate world that have this syndrome, and it can be so debilitating that the person, the, whoever suffers from it may not be able to do the work that she's employed for. And it's very common among women, especially those who reach middle management, are going into senior management. When you get there, you are kind of shaky. Can I do this? Especially, and if you have any other differentiating factor in the uh, developed world if it's common amongst black women you just find out that you are sitting down there and you are beginning to question yourself question your decisions and you sometimes would not be able you feel like oh they will soon catch me out here <laughs> I, they will know that I'm fake and this can be very very debilitating now, this is also possible in the spiritual world that you feel like a fake. Some people who come and stand here, not everybody is confident. You, they will just, even some of our pastors, they sometimes question themselves. And if you do this very often, it can steal your joy. Instead of you to sit down and enjoy the position you have been, God has put you in, you begin to doubt 
and question, can I do it? Can I not do it? And you lose your joy. When everybody is expressing joy, you are busy thinking, hey, they, can, they will soon find me oh, that I don't know anything. All these decisions I'm making, it will soon blow up in my face. So it is a stealer of our joy. Um, but how can we counter this? By knowing who we are in Christ. Just to confirm that this is, it could be spiritual as well. I went into the Bible. What did I, and went to see whether I could find anybody who suffered uh, imposter syndrome. And lo and behold, I did. Who is that person? Brother Gideon. Even Brother Moses too suffered from that syndrome. Please let's go to Judges 6. The Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord and for seven years he gave them into the hands of the Midianites. Because the power of Midian was so oppressive, the Israelites prepared shelters for themselves in mountain clefts, caves and strongholds. They were hiding. Therefore, whenever the Israelites planted their crops, the Midianites, the Amalekites, and other eastern peoples invaded the country. Next verse. They camped on the land, ruined the crops all the way to Gaza, and did not spare a living thing for Israel, neither sheep, nor cattle, nor donkeys. They came up with their livestock and their tents like swarms of locusts. It was impossible to count them or their camels. They invaded the land to ravage it. Media so impoverished the Israelites that they cried out to the Lord for help. What did they do? They cried out for the, to the Lord for help. The Israelites cried out to the Lord because of Midian. He sent them a prophet who said, This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. I rescued you from the hand of the Egyptians and I delivered you from the hands of all your oppressors. I drove them out before you and gave you to their land. I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose land you live, but you have not listened to me. 11. Then the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak of Opera that belonged to Joash the Abizarite, whose son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to keep it from the Midianites. He had to go in hiding to go to where he would thresh his wheat. Normally, when you want to thresh and winnow grain, you stay in an open area where wind can lift the chaff. But he was so afraid of the Midianites that he had to go and stay in a wine press. Wine presses are usually uh, in maybe at the back or at the bottom, a cellar below the surface where so that the wines could be stored at cool temperatures. So he was hiding there. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. But if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all the wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, did, did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the hand of the Midian? The Lord turned to Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied. How can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the least in my family. 
is this imposter syndrome or not? Telling me that, me, I don't know what you are talking about. Oh. I don't know who this mighty warrior you are talking about is. It certainly cannot be me. My clan is the smallest. Even in my family, I am the weakest. He didn't even say I'm the youngest. He said, I am the weakest. Now, this is imposter syndrome. God has seen him as a man of valor. He saw himself as, um, as, a, as the weakest man in existence. The same thing happened to those Moses sent out to go and, um, to go and spy on Jericho. They went and they saw themselves as cockroaches against the giants. And they came back and said so. Now, that is how, and you see what, how it ended for them. Because they came back and pronounced themselves as small before the, uh, the people in Jericho, they did not see the promised land. So sometimes this imposter syndrome can be, the, I mean, the effects can go on for generations. Now, one day, uh, Sister Tutu, I think it was the last day of um, the, Af the AFCON final. And she, she asked us to pray for Nigeria. And Pastor T came up and reminded us that there are Christians in Nigeria and there are also Christians in Cote d'Ivoire. You remember that day? And he said, who will God answer? And I went on, the first thing was Nigeria now, but then as I sat down there, it took, it, some, the devil, I assume it's the devil now, just said, what has Nigeria done for God that God will answer this prayer? And... What that? What has Nigeria gone done for God? That is to answer. That I'm sure is Cote d'Ivoire, <laughs> but I did not mention it to anybody. But as I was driving home, the Holy Spirit gave me a jab in my side that that is the imposter syndrome speaking. And thank God I did not mention it. They would have said it's the power in my tongue that made. <laughs> <laughs> that made Nigeria lose. But of course, we all know that whoever would have won that match will be according to the will and the purpose of God. The reason why Cote d'Ivoire won and Nigeria lost, it is only God that can tell it, it to us. And maybe later, he will reveal it to us if he chooses and we will see the wisdom of his ways. So, uh, I'm sure I've give, with my brief introduction, I've given you, you all have a good idea of what uh, imposter syndrome is. Now, how do we get rid of it? How do we, the devil will come and come and uh, attack your mind. Especially in these days, when everything God bless Nigeria. Every morning you go up, the price of what you bought yesterday night would have changed if would have changed before morning. And it's food. I mean, if it's like I want to buy dress or I want to buy shoe and they are doubling the price, I can easily go without. But will I put my money in my pots? I can't. I have to find money to survive and things are getting better and better every day and the devil can come and come and tempt us this morning as I woke up my fridge and freezer stopped working my inverter did not work so that means I have to look for money to buy um, batteries I don't want to go to the market tomorrow and find out how much that, was, that will cost. 
But I said it is a lie. I will dance the victory dance. I will come up here and tell my people that the devil is a liar. I know who I am in Christ. Who are we in Christ? First of all, we are children of the Most High God. Hallelujah! We are children of the Most High God. The devil may try us, but who is with us? God is with us. Hallelujah. I'm a child of God. And we see this in, uh, if we go to John 1, verse 12, it says, But to all who believe him and accepted him, he has given the right to become children of God. And if you are a child of God, who do you look like? You look like your father. Sometimes because you have lived with your father so much, even if you don't look physically like him, you have the uh, mannerisms of your father. My daughter looks like she's the splitting image of my husband. In fact, when she was little, she, because she was very dark and now I'm very light, when we pass police checkpoints, they always ask, is this child your child? And I will have to say, yes, it, it is. Uh, but I take comfort because I see me in her a lot more than I see her father in him, in her. Because all she has picked up all my little nuances, things that I do. I will just, mm, that's me. The bad ones and the good ones. <laughs> she, I saw we look, we have the DNA of our father. Anything that our father does, we as children of God, we ought to be able to do it. Why are we not walking in it? I should be able to go, walk along, see a sick person and lay my hands and say, gold I have not, silver I, I have not, get up and walk. Why don't we do it? Why has the church become so weak? Because all we need to, if we are doing that, this place will be full. People will be running into. That ingathering of a joyful harvest will come. I mean, it will be a natural thing. We will even have to remove the chairs and say everybody stands so that we can fit in more people into it's because we don't believe who we are we don't realize that we have the power of our father but we do everything that God can do he said he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings pertaining to life you must be able to meet the people's needs Jesus didn't go and uh, the reason why he had 3,000, 5,000 people following him was because they knew he would meet their needs. They were hungry with two loaves and five fishes. He fed them. The ones that were sick, he healed them. Whoever was blind, he opened their eyes. Jesus healed all diseases. There was none that was uh, that was too big for him. He healed all. And we too, we should believe who we are and go out there and do the things that we are meant to do. Ephesians says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. It gave him great pleasure to create us in his own image because he wanted us to be like God on earth. My brethren in capstone, know who you are in Christ. 
Who else did I find that we are? We are heirs with Christ of the kingdom. We have an inheritance. The same inheritance that Jesus has, we share. And the way, way God has done it, he shares one into many places and it still remains one. We are heirs of the kingdom. Sometimes the devil comes like me. You are not good enough. You are a sinner. How dare you go and lay your hands on the sick and expect to heal people. It attacks your mind first. But you have to remind yourself, I have the mind of Christ. Devil, you have no place in my mind. I have the mind of Christ. And I am forgiven whatever whatever sin that I have that I have committed. I am forgiven. Most times what the devil comes at you with are sins that you have committed in the past. If Rachel can be found in the genealogy of Jesus, uh -uh. have you killed person? No, you have not. But even by chance that you have killed someone, God wipes it away. The minute you confess, you repent and forsake that sin. He does not remember it. So you need to tell the devil, get thee behind me. I am the forgiven one. Hallelujah. God says that we are forgiven for any and every sin once we repent and ask for forgiveness. Not because of what we have done, but because of who God is. Jesus has paid the price. And that price was a heavy one. He has paid the price. And so you are forgiven. And also you are not condemned. There is therefore no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Are we not Christ's children? So we belong to Christ. No one can condemn us. No one. Not even the devil. So go boldly out there knowing who you are and do what the Lord has asked you to do. For it is the Lord that we, has given you the will to do. So once he has put it in your mind and has asked you go there, don't think of yourself Am I qualified to do this? You are not going in your own power. You are going in the power of the Lord. Yorobas says, Ah, Kimperu, and ito tanji shefu. And ito ronwan she. So it is not my concern. If I lay my hands there, it is up to God, though, because I didn't go there claiming to be God. I went because God sent me. So all I have to do is lay my hands and pray according to the will of God and believe that God will do the work. And most times God does it. It's just that he may not be doing that, not be answering your prayer in the way you are expecting them, the prayer to be answered. There is the man that Jesus opened his eyes that first he only saw uh, trees like trees. So God may be healing in stages. The fact that this person did not jump up from the sick bed does not mean that God has, did not heal that person. So let's manage our expectations. Let's go out there boldly knowing who we are and the power that we uh, carry in Christ. Another 
I am that I found. I have become a new person. I'm a new person in Christ. I am not the old person. So that condemnation, even if God didn't say that, I am a new person. All things have passed. They've gone. They've passed away. They are gone. I am new. I am new in Christ. And I carry the power of Christ. Hallelujah. Now, some people, like me now, I look in the mirror. Ah, Lord, if only I had a smaller waist. If only my stomach was flat, I would do great things for you. <laughs> some people, they will look. Ah, I am short. If only I were tall. Hmm. Father, they would have seen me from far when I'm coming to do your work. Some people, they will say, ah, I want to. While somebody is saying, I'm too, I'm leper. Someone is saying, I'm too fat. The grass always looks greener on the other side. Someone who is a fantastic minister in the helps ministry wants to come and stand on the pulpit. Instead of he, the person to be excellent in the helps that he's doing, he wants to come and stand. Then he will stand here and if God did not send him here, he will mess up. But if he stayed where God in the assignments that God put him, he will excel and he will meet, win so many people into the kingdom of of God. Some people, the world has labeled you, labeled you. You are lazy. You are a workaholic. You are poor. And then you, because the world keeps telling you that, you internalize these things and believe that that is who you are. But that is not who you are. I'm sure Gideon had been told, who are you? How can you talk here? You from Manasseh, the smallest clan in this, uh, the smallest tribe amongst the Israelites. Not only are you from there, you are from the smallest family. You are even the weakest person, weakest man there. And he had, even if those things, we know that those things are not true. But he so internalized it that he believed that that is who he was. That's not who we are. We are who God says we are. Hallelujah. And God tells me that I am his masterpiece. Hallelujah. I am his masterpiece. I have been fearfully and wonderfully made I am custom built. I am a limited edition. As Pastor Fumi will say, full options made for the purpose for which God created me. Hallelujah. The world can't label me. The world can't steal my joy. I am who, if God created me like this, it means that I fit just the way he created me into what he wants me to do. He created my bestow, who is the complete opposite of me, to be who she is because he knows what she's going to do in the kingdom. She's very boisterous. She's very all over the place loves every, everybody, can butt into anybody's life. I'm always having to call, don't do that. Don't do that. You are intruding. But she, that is the way God created her, to be an intruder. Whereas me, <laughs> whereas me, I'm the child of a lecturer that was born in England so I'm um, Iyakonza from 
the beginning to an end. I am conservative. Ibi tomba fi yo misi, lo mado misi. I don't go outside my boundaries. So some people may see me and say, ah, she's proud. She's a snob. She's a this. She doesn't. And if me too, I hear and I internalize it. I, but God created me that way for the purpose which he wants me to be. So each of you, no matter what people say you are, and they will say, if you are fat, they will say you are fat. You go and lose weight, they will say, ah, ah, you are looking very sick. Why? Ah, ah, where are you? Why are you looking as if you have HIV? Meanwhile, they are the same people that told you you were too fat. So whatever you do, you cannot please people. So why not just live the way God has designed you to be? Hallelujah. You are the best that God has for that position. Hallelujah. We are always wishing for a slimmer waist, a lighter or darker complexion, a bigger house, and you will say, oh Lord, give me a bigger house so that I can have house fellowship. I can bring everybody in. Now lie. We just want to show, say, I better pass my neighbor. I've arrived. Hallelujah. So, uh, I want these gifts so that I can do more for God. Just be content. Identify the gifts that God has given you and work it work it, hone it, be the best at it. That is how you would excel in what God has called you to be. Hallelujah. Do you know that we are gods? We are gods on earth. He even says in Hebrews 2.7 that he has made us a little lower than the angels. He has crowned us with glory and honor. Hallelujah. Uh, and he, at the end of that, he says that we have the mind of Christ. I was so wowed by that. That, oh, you mean I have the mind of Christ? That's awesome. But also it's a heavy responsibility. I have to do what's in every situation I find myself, if I have the mind of Christ, I must think like Christ. I must love like Christ. I must speak like Christ. I must do like Christ did. Sometimes, that's great. In fact, I would have gone wrong in the opposite direction before I remember. But, ah, ah, sister, elder Lama <laughs> And I come back. Ah, yeah, Capstone must not meet me in this position. I met a lady at work. And she had been performing below par. And so I called her in and said, let's have a mother and daughter talk. She's of the Gen Z generation. So uh, we're talking I was, I would scold her small. I would tell her, ah, but you are beautiful. Eh? But if only you will add some more, uh, some hard, more work so that you will excel. And then we finished our talk. She had been rude to her supervisor. So I told her, ah, that's, are you Christian? She said, yes. I said, ah, Jesus will be so disappointed in you. You were rude. You were, that's, what would Jesus have done in that position? She was convicted and said, oh, I'm so sorry, ma. Then on her way out, she said, ma, do you know that I've seen you in Capstone? I said, eh, you mean you've come to Capstone? I'm always very tripped when I see people who know about, even if you tell me that you know about Capstone alone, I fall in love with you immediately. So I was very, she said, I attended that church for a while. And I said, ah, if I tell Pastor Tokes what you have done here, he will be very upset. He said, please don't tell him. So, 
we should behave the way Christ would behave. You are the cornerstone, right? You are the stone the builders rejected. They've rejected you, yes. But you should show them that you are the capstone. You are the light of the world. You should be seen miles ahead. You are a city set on the hill. Hallelujah. You are, I am. So what do you do when you come across the imposter syndrome? You do like what I would do. I would stand in the front of my mirror every day and look all I do is say go. You are a child of God. I am the light of the world. Wherever I go into, darkness is dispelled. I can do all things through God who strengthens me. I have the power of God inside me. I'm a solution provider. Wherever I enter into, light comes in there. I am bold. The Lord has not given me the spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and a sound mind. So when they are talking things at the boardroom or in the uh, management meeting, I would speak. When I speak, everybody would know that I have come with a solution. That is what we should do in the morning. We should affirm. Brother Tommy Day at one time did some affirmations. I put, he did it on CD. That was in those days when we had uh, CDs in our cars. Now there's no CD. So I don't know. I don't know whether it's on YouTube. Those affirmations, I'll be playing it. And you would not realize when you begin to internalize those things that you are saying or that is being said to you. And because you go there, you go out with all boldness and you excel. You are who God says you are. You can only do this if you spend time in the presence of God. Sunday is not the only time which you come to be in the presence of God. We were told yesterday, if you were in the class yesterday, that every day is Sunday. Every day is a holy day. Every day is, you are to wear the presence of God everywhere you go, every day of the week. So let us try and do that. Spend time in the presence of God. Have a, uh, a time, a meeting time with God. Maybe if you can't do one hour, start with 10 minutes. God will meet you there in your 10 minutes. And then what I found is that as I go in there for 10 minutes, he starts dropping things in my mind. Pray for this person. Pray for. By the time I'm done, I see that, ah, I've spent 40 minutes here. If I did 40 minutes today, I can do one hour tomorrow. So let's start at what, whatever level you find yourself. Spend time in the presence of God. Learn to be silent also. Let God speak to you. It's not all the time that you are meant to be speaking to God. Listen. Stay quiet. Maybe for 5-10 minutes after your prayers. Or even before. Because he may want you to pray, to pray for a particular thing that is completely different from what you came there with. So let's learn to be quiet in the presence of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I've said a way to counter imposter syndrome is affirm yourself, spend time in the presence of God, and then go out into the fields, go out into the world, 
and go and practice everything God has asked you to do. Everybody, giving someone as simple as a smile can turn that person around, can make that person feel loved. Something you've said can make the difference. There are many times I would say something to someone and maybe months later, they, I, I have forgotten what I said because it's not me who said it, it's God. So I've forgotten. Ah, dear Dr. Sego, do you know that it is when you said this, 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 that this happened for me? And I begin to wonder. But the thing is, let's go out. God will use you. God will take over your hands, take over your mouth, take over your feet, send you to places where you, where you get there, you'll be wondering, what am I doing here? But it's all God's purpose. He can do great things through you. Hallelujah. Even though you, you think, who am I? But God definitely knows who you are and he will use you to do whatever he wants you to do and fit into his purpose. Hallelujah. So uh, can I ask the choir to come and sing just two songs for us that will drum you sang, I am a chosen generation. I know who I am. We are a chosen generation. All from the show is excellence. All I require for life, God has given me. I know who I am. We are a chosen We are a chosen generation. communion meal we are children of God we are the forgiven ones and we are forgiven not because of what anything that we have done but because who God is and the sacrifice that Jesus made he went to the cross to die for us and before he left, he said, do this in remembrance of me. So we break bread this morning. Let's break bread. Eat. Take the cup. Thank you, Father. Thank you for bringing us from out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of your Son. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. I am a friend of God. 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 He calls me friend. Who am I? Who am I? Let's 